What if I told you that Mexico's true story isn't written in codices, carved into pyramids, or buried in colonial archives, but hidden in its blood, because Mexican DNA is unlike anything ever discovered? Inside it, scientists have found traces of Ice Age nomads, ghost populations no longer found anywhere on Earth, Asian sailors, African survivors, and even gene flows from people who may have crossed oceans long before Columbus. It's not just ancestry, it's a mystery, one that rewrites the story of the Americas. Let's rewind the clock, not hundreds, but thousands of generations. Long before pyramids pierced the sky or empires carved their names into stone, Mexico was a wild, untouched world, its mountains unscaled, its rivers unnamed, and into this landscape stepped the first humans. They didn't arrive with fanfare or flags, they came in silence, tracking mammoths, following herds, surviving on edge. Around 15,000 to 20,000 years ago, small bands of Ice Age foragers migrated from Asia, crossing the frozen land bridge known as Beringia, then slowly drifting south. But here's the twist. Their DNA doesn't match the simple story we were told. In the high-altitude caves of Zacatecas and Chiquihuit, Scientists extracted fragments of ancient DNA from stone tools and bone. What they found wasn't just typical Siberian ancestry, it was something different. Embedded deep within these samples were markers from a mysterious ghost population, a lineage no longer found in any living group, unidentified yet unmistakable. I'm on a road to get 10,000 subscribers. Please subscribe. These first Mexicans may have been a blend of different worlds, not just from Asia, but possibly linked to lineages we've lost entirely. And their genetic legacy didn't vanish. It's still pulsing, quietly, in the blood of millions. In the volcanic highlands near Tlapacoya and deep within the ancient soils of the Tehuacan Valley, archaeologists unearthed skulls so old they seemed to predate everything we thought we knew about the Americas. But it wasn't the bones that shocked scientists, it was the DNA. Buried inside these remains were genetic markers strikingly similar to people from Australasia, places like the Andaman Islands, Papua New Guinea, even parts of Southeast Asia. How is that possible? This wasn't supposed to be here. The dominant theory held that the Americas were settled by a single wave of migrants from Siberia. But now, it looks like there may have been more than one wave and one of them might have come from the Pacific. These ancient genes don't appear in modern Mexican populations, which means somewhere along the way, entire bloodlines were erased, forgotten by time. Only the DNA remembers. Civilization rose. Stone by stone, the jungle gave way to greatness, to Olmec heads, Maya temples, and Zapotec cities carved high into the hills. These weren't just ancient societies. They were architects of time, shaping calendars, languages and belief systems still alive today. But under the ruins, buried in bones and teeth, DNA tells a more fragmented story. Genetic studies show surprising regional variation among ancient Mexican peoples. The highland city of Teotihuacan, with its sprawling avenues and pyramids, had a population with genetic links as far south as the Maya lowlands and possibly even to the Amazon basin. Meanwhile, the Olmecs of the Gulf Coast show signs of a long isolated gene pool, a population that may have diverged thousands of years before empires rose. The movement of goods, obsidian, jade, cacao, that was easy to track, but what if genes moved too? Trade wasn't just about objects, it could have been about people, marriages between city-states, migrations during drought, or entire communities relocated by war or alliance. That's why modern Mexicans carry a genome that's not just ancient, it's diverse, layered, and regionally distinct, like mosaic tiles laid over a buried road. And most of what we know about early visitors to Mexico comes from stones, ruins, and myths. But DNA is revealing footprints we never expected. In coastal regions like Veracruz and Guerrero, geneticists uncovered something shocking sub-Saharan African lineages. But these weren't from the transatlantic slave trade. Some of them predate Columbus by centuries. How?
There are theories. One suggests shipwreck survivors from early African voyages, carried across the Atlantic by current and chance. Others point to lost expeditions, or even contact through trade networks unknown to European historians. Archaeological finds, like copper artefacts, unfamiliar botanical remains, and rumours of non-native crops, have long fueled speculation. Most mainstream scholars dismiss them. But now? The DNA won't stay silent. Then there are the Olmec colossal heads, towering stone faces with broad noses and full lips. Some claimed they resembled Africans. Most scholars insisted it was artistic style. But pair those sculptures with African mitochondrial DNA in nearby remains and suddenly the debate shifts. This doesn't rewrite the history books yet, but it raises the question, did ancient Mexico have visitors from beyond the Atlantic long before European sails appeared on the horizon? In the early 1500s, Hernán Cortés stepped onto Mexican soil and nothing would ever be the same. The Spanish didn't just bring steel and war horses, they brought bloodlines that would alter the genetic fabric of a continent. But here's the surprise. Mexico's European DNA isn't just Spanish. Genetic studies reveal a stunning variety. Alongside Iberian markers, scientists found traces of North African, Middle Eastern, Italian, and even Southeast European ancestry. Why? Because the Spanish Empire wasn't a nation. It was a global machine. Its armies included Moorish converts, Sephardic Jews, Basques, and the North Africans. Its ports teemed with sailors from every corner of the Mediterranean. Even its settlers were a mix. Conquistadors, colonists, clergy, adventurers, and convicts. Some carried genes shaped by centuries of contact with the Islamic world. Others came with African ancestry from generations of Moorish rule in Spain. These markers blended into Mexico's genome not through conquest alone, but through marriage, survival, and generations of shared life. By the 1600s, mestizaje, the mixing of peoples, wasn't just a social concept. It was written into the bones of a nation. And it didn't stop there. The ships kept coming uh, from even farther away. Between the 1560s and the early 1800s, massive ships called Manila galleons crossed the Pacific every year, connecting Spanish colonies in the Philippines with New Spain, Mexico. But they carried more than silk, porcelain, and spices. They carried people, thousands of them, enslaved Southeast Asians, indentured servants, merchants, sailors from the Philippines, Indonesia, China, even India, were brought to Mexican ports like Acapulco. Many never returned. Over generations, they settled, married, and vanished into the folds of Mexican identity. But their DNA never forgot. In Guerrero, Colima, and parts of Jalisco, genetic studies revealed Southeast Asian ancestry, subtle but undeniable. Some Mexican families still carry surnames like Tayabas or Luzon. Some speak Nahuatl and Spanish, with traces of Tagalog rhythm in their dialects. I'm on a road to get 10,000 subscribers. Please subscribe. Mexico's DNA isn't a single story. It's not a straight line or even a family tree. It's a tapestry, wild, ancient, and stitched by survival. It holds the footprints of Ice Age wanderers, the mystery of ghost lineages, the glory of Olmec kings and Maya astronomers, the silent arrivals of Asian mariners, and the unbreakable spirit of African survivors. It remembers what history forgets. It tells us that Mexico isn't a fusion of three cultures. It's the product of a thousand invisible hands, some reaching from deserts, jungles, volcanoes, and across oceans, Every strand of DNA is a time machine, and Mexico's genome may be the most surprising ever sequenced. If this story amazed you, like and subscribe. Comment below what shocked you the most, the Pacific DNA, the African legacy, or the ghost population. Your answer might inspire our next exploration. If this story amazed you, like and subscribe. Comment below what shocked you the most, the Pacific DNA, the African legacy, or the ghost population. Your answer might inspire our next exploration. I'm on a road to get 10,000 subscribers. Please subscribe.